Hello there, I'm here with my pal Lino. She's a cat, not a lion. You're right, lovely, are you? She's staying on me quite happily, which is quite unusual. Um, you're about to watch another vintage retro Oh, Lino. Is there a Thundercats emergency? Is that where you have to go? Slightly scratch me. That's the thanks I get for feeding her and looking after her, eh? You know what I mean. You people with cats know what I mean. Or kids, it's the same thing. They're all cunts. Uh, this is another Rahalastapa, retro Rahalastapa. This time, I guess, is the amazing Miranda Hart, who I appeared with in uh, the short film, which name I've forgotten now. I was going to say you can choose your friends, but that was something else. I'm very tired. I'm a very tired old and old man. It's very difficult for me to carry on. But look, I'm still wearing cool sunglasses. Yeah. So um, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, the Kickstarter campaign for the next series of Raha Lerstapa, as the cool kids are calling it, has been successful. We've reached £31,000 nearly, which is great. There's still a couple of days left if you want to give some more. Maybe not by the time this comes out. Uh, and we'll try and do the same for the next series probably and uh, I am on tour and when, by the time this is out I'm coming to Taunton on Friday and Swindon on Saturday uh, this week uh, and just go to richherring.com slash L-O-T-D-S slash tour and you can find out all about that but um, for now that is all I'm going to give you go, go and watch Miranda Hart on Ra Ha La Stapa have a great day. Thank you for donating to the Kickstarter if you did. If not, don't worry. You'll be able to enjoy it all for free. Suckers! Ah! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who would run 3.1 miles, but who will not run 3.1 miles more. It's Richard Herring! Thank you very much. Hello. How are you doing? Lovely to see you all. Thank you for coming. Uh, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. This is Richard Herring's Leicester Square, Square Theatre Podcast. I am Richard Herring, but all the cool kids are calling it Rahel Estepa. <laughs> Quite a lot of cool kids in. That's good to see. I like it when the cool kids come. Uh, uh, you may wonder why I came in. I've just run a, a, a half marathon yesterday. That's what that was about. Thank you. I got all the way around. <laughs> Uh, in uh, two hours, 37 minutes and 41 seconds. Just getting inside the two hour, 38 minute barrier <laughs> that all serious athletes are aiming for. It's about 45 minutes off my personal best. So I was very <laughs> pleased, as you can imagine. Uh, and I, well, I was glad, I'm glad to get round. You always see like someone in trouble. Uh, and there was a really horrific man screaming in agony at mile 12. I hope he is still alive. <laughs> He was making so much noise that I think he probably was still alive, but it was absolutely terrifying. It's such a fun event uh, until someone ruins it by dying. But think of the sponsorship. So um, <laughs> uh, you may wonder why I've come on uh, with a, a tennis racket. Uh, if you've seen uh, the first two episodes of this series, I'm amazed because the second one isn't even out yet. Uh, and the first one came out today. But we were beset by a plague of flies. Uh, who apparently were here because some born-again Christians who were in the theatre had left some rubbish around or something. Or it might have been a miracle from God. <laughs> or it might have been a punishment from God. That is more likely. So there were loads of flies. Uh, so this is a present I have just received today. Uh, it comes from uh, an Adrian Reynolds, who was in the audience. He said, uh, I've been there for the fly fun on Monday. I thought you might need this for the future. What this is, is a, it's a tennis racket, but if you touch a button, it becomes electrified, and then you hit. <laughs> it's quite good fun, although it does say on the... Um, it does say on here, uh, this executioner... It's called an executioner, which I like. <laughs> They've made it like a tennis racket, and then they just thought, let's call it an executioner anyway. They could have thought of a tennis-based pun. Uh, maybe we'll think of one later for it. Uh, it produces static electricity, charge imbalance. Push the button and zap mosquitoes, flies, wasps, or any flying or crawling insect. You can make of your choice. You don't, it doesn't have to be the ones they recommend. Uh, the shock is powerful enough to kill most mosquitoes. That doesn't sound that powerful to me. <laughs> Some mosquitoes are fine. It can take the wings off a fly. It's a shame there are no flies around. Uh, no messy splats on the wall or dangerous chemical sprays. The executioner is composed of only the highest quality materials and is guaranteed for one year. 
is indispensable for those who sit outdoors, camp or barbecue, or are in the Leicester Square Theatre. Uh, warnings! Touching the grill with a red light on will result in a shock. Do not zap animals or people. Keep out of the reach of young children. Keep one foot 30 centimetres away from all sensitive electronic equipment. <laughs> So we may have made it, including pacemakers. Have anyone got a pacemaker in the front row? Um, uh, keep dry at all times. Keep metal objects away from the grill. Does anyone want to be electrocuted to find out what it is? Do you want to be electrocuted, Tom? No? Do you want to be electrocuted, Butler? Do you want to give, you'll give it a go? Uh, I'm going to... The Leicester Square Theatre and I am not liable for whatever... <laughs> Yep, you've got to go. You've got to buy the video to see that. There, she is. Did it hurt? Did it hurt? Sorry. Did it hurt? Um, marginally. Marginally. You're very brave. What's your name? Uh, Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. Thanks for being. That was much more scary than I thought it would be. But that's quite good to just have on hand, isn't it? For a heckless. I was. I didn't think it really spark. I hope I got that on film because I was just I'm pointing. Well. Are you? You're a tennis player, so it's, I'm used to being electrocuted by tennis rackets. Wouldn't you, if you play, if you're in a tennis player who plays only during electrical storms, then yeah, this must be, and uses your hand as a ball. Uh, I'm into sadomasochistic sex, so it's fine, it's actually, I am quite used to that. Well, terrific, look, we've only got our first guest for, oh, fuck, uh, for a limited time, so I'm going to get straight on uh, and introduce her. I know you've all come to see her. Uh, she is probably best known as Mrs. Lily Lemon from Hotel Trouble. That is her most famous role. Will you please welcome Miranda Hart, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully. There she is. Come in, sit down. Take out a microphone. We've got, these, are new, these are special new, we've never had these I like before. them. Ru who's Ruth? There, she just... Oh my God, you're so brave. What's that? <laughs> Someone's going to die. She went full, full on as well, the palm of a hand. She really wasn't... really frightening. Could have gripped the thing and then been stuck. I could have wow. just let the button go, but I wouldn't have done. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I hope I caught it on film. I was, I was so, it was, there was an actual flash but of electricity. I did a jump, I jumped. <laughs> I thought she might be dead. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> how are you doing? Thank you for coming along. My pleasure, this Good. is fun. I'm, I'm enjoying myself already. So we'll get this out of the way, because this is what everyone will ask you about. So yeah. what was it like? How was it in hotel trouble? Being I was Mrs. trying to think Lily. what hotel trouble was. <laughs> Kids like show. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember like, anything um, about it. It oh. was a, like a child's version of Faulty Towers, from what I recall. Not yeah. that I'm obsessed with children's television. Just have a little hat on. Tiny. I, I haven't watched it. No. <laughs> you sounded like you knew your chisel about it. No, I just go through imdb.com. Oh, I pick see. On, pick on the most obscure. I genuinely thing. remember nothing. <laughs> The high all Not the way Not Liz through. Lemon, that's 30 Rock. What's no. she called? Mrs. Lemon. Mrs. Lily Lemon. Lily Lemon. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great day. It's a great <laughs> show. Really enjoyed it. All right, it. well, we'll move on to another obscure role. Yeah. Uh, in which uh, the star of this movie, which I'll call it a movie, yeah. was amazing. Mm. You were in a film called A Very British Cult. Has anyone, yeah. anyone seen that? Yeah. It's got... <laughs> it's got a, a this is going to be awkward when you find out who the star <laughs> of it was. <laughs> it is pretty... It's, uh, I, was, I was the star. Rich Terring. <laughs> one of, it's Terring one of my three, three acting roles I've done. What were the other two? Uh, well, I've probably done more than... I've did, I, I was uh, in You Can Choose Your Friends, which is a thing I co-wrote, which I oh, wrote, yeah. and then yeah. was in, um, in which I mainly had sex with the pretty actress most of the way through. Well, a perk of writing. But it is. Yeah. You're not averse to a little bit of to that yourself? Well, of, well, I don't go around don't sleeping with the... Pretty girls no. in my show, no. You, sh you can do if I you can. want. I can. But you've got like BBC a couple one. of bows in your sitcom. Yeah, a couple of casting of tall men, as yeah. always. Yeah, <laughs> a perk of the job. Uh, and I've also was... I've done quite a few... Th I can't think of anything else I've been in. Oh, I did a, th uh, a, t a short film called Hard to Swallow, which is really good. OK. In which I played a, a man who ate lots of potatoes. Smashed, I was making mashed potatoes right. and, and ate them, and then uh, I had to take some cocaines. Not really. It was, it was just acting. Sounds brilliant. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then there was, I, don't, I won't tell you, it's a very short film and yeah. there's a surprise at the end, but you have to watch Doesn't it. Doesn't sound as good as a very British cult. No, though. so what do, you remember, what do you remember? It was filmed in Western Superman. It was. <laughs> in about 2003 or four, something like that. A one, actually. It, was it that far 2001, back? yeah. Oh, my God. 
I know, with Emma Kennedy. Yeah. Who else was in it? Uh, Jerry McNulty. Gus thingy from uh, Gus and Gus thing. and thing. <laughs> you know Gus <laughs> and thing. Yeah. Um, the bloke yeah. from jo- uh, the bloke from the thick of it, Joss's Alex Giants. McQueen. The star of Joss's Giants. Oh. No. Anyone know? You know what I mean? Uh, he was in it. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, I can't remember. He's really. I've got on really well with him, and now I'm embarrassed because I, I should have looked at his name to, uh, before <laughs> from my MDP. He was quite a nice guy. I think you might. Who played your husband? You were married. You, you uh, were only Gus Brown, who yeah, was, was Gus five foot four. Yeah. So that was funny. It was funny. Our children be perfect we height. Were, we were waiting for Jesus. We were waiting for Jesus. We were waiting for Jesus to return. And then and you went off. I went to a service station where I thought he was going to return. Yes. And met him, but he was just an actor in the local Jesus Christ Superstar. You're, it's a genius bit of film writing. You've wrecked. You've wrecked. I've wrecked for it. some reason, was uh, trying to advertise his play in a service station. Dressed as Jesus. It yes. seemed a bit odd. That. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I decided to ruin it because I had a hunch they probably weren't going to immediately look it up. <laughs> you can get it. It's on. Uh, you can watch on the YouTube. YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube. The YouTube. The YouTube. I prefer. I'm, you're very good in it. I'm, I, I'm surprised I didn't get any other roles. From uh, it as, since. A res- <laughs> as a result of that. Now, you are very posh, even though you say you're not. You've got like about five. Your, your Miranda Hart isn't even your real name. It's but, part, it's two of your names, but it's not yeah, one of them. Yeah. And they're really you're called Miranda Catherine Hart Dyke. Yeah. Didn't want to go for Miranda Dyke. I ditched the Dyke. <laughs> I ditched the Dyke. Did you? My grandma's like, I don't understand why you're getting rid of the dyke. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, it also means... Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's your real name. I, just th- I think if you're a proper actress, you can probably do Miranda Hart Dyke, can't yes, you? Yes, I think so. But as a comedian, it's like... You're, you're setting yourself up for the jokes at you. Well, it looks than... like a joke name. Miranda Dyke would look like you thought, what's yeah. the funny... You think, oh, I've got to come up with a really funny... It's yeah. like Richard Herring, basically. I've come up with a really <laughs> funny comedy yeah. name. Well, it could be Ripple. Randy Dyke. Yeah. And then that would be proper funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> maybe I'll start becoming Randy Dyke. If we bring Carry On Films back. I mean, you'll yeah. be amazing at Carry On. We should bring Carry On Films, films back, back and you should be in them. Miranda Hart's <laughs> playing Randy Dyke. <laughs> Um, but you are cont- I'm very interested in genealogy. Okay. And you can trace your family back to the 12th century, which only really posh people can do. Right. But yeah, it goes. All... I think it's. Did you? I don't know. You probably know more than me. I don't, like, look I... at your little booklet. It's nice. It's, nice. Um, my, my, it's very nice. Slithering. I think James the First. It goes back to James the First. I think so. That is quite posh. Yeah, but but my, a lot of people can go back to a king, can't they? No. I oh, know. Uh, I thought well, they, they could. We probably could if we I knew. I thought they could. Yeah. But no, we can't. You and Alexander Armstrong. Alexander Armstrong is right Oh no, to he's the way Conqueror. posher. He's proper posh. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even disguise it on point on a game show in he the doesn't. afternoon of BBC One. <laughs> I mean, you can tell most posh people because they try and disguise it. See, I think you're probably posher than you. Me? No, I'm not. I'm really. I'm less really? posh than I appear. Really? You're yeah. poshing up. <laughs> I'm pretending. Is this you poshing up? I've got you and Miles Jupp uh, here today, and I've, I'm really going to have to either go really working class. Yeah. I'm very middle class. My parents are teachers. Right. Whereas all your family seem to be admirals and MPs and. Yeah, there's a lot of navy. Navy based. Yeah, my dad was a captain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a heroic captain in uh, yeah. HMS Coventry in the Falklands War. Yeah, he was the last great sort of naval war hero, my dad. Very proud. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, his ship went down. I don't know why you're laughing. No, I'm not. <laughs> his ship went down. I'm not telling you the one did he die? <laughs> yeah. It was a terrible tragedy. A lot of people did die, but you're t- t- You find it hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but no, he survived, he survived. He did. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's an amazing story, actually. Fifteen minutes it took for that uh, frigate to go down. Yeah, I said frigate, did <laughs> And go down. And go down. I think it, the audience it would really have to be... It was go down that... The, the audience would really have to be searching for double entendres to yeah. be going, oh, I hope there's going to be some rude sex <laughs> jokes in this story of one of the worst things that happened in the Falklands War. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you started by laughing in my face about it. I thought you just sort of so funny that I thought it was going to be a joke. <laughs> <laughs> then I got nervous. This happened, <laughs> this happened to me the other day. I was in uh, Armenia last month. Right, uh, as you doing are. A, yeah, doing a TV show um, uh, with David, David Baddiel. 
Uh, but give him his, you know, his correct name. That's what my dad calls him, so that's his name. <laughs> uh, and we had to spend loads of money in Armenia. It was a really weird job that we had. Uh, but there was a translator from Armenia, and they really hate Turkey in Armenia, like because there was right. a big, there was a, basically a genocide. Turkey, there was a war, and Turkey kind of basically killed yeah. loads of Armenian people, and then stole Mount Ararat and loads of. Is that the funniest territory. thing ever to you? She started talking. <laughs> she started talking about. The, the, oh, she's no. the, but she was quite a nice lady. She said, you know, she started talking about Turkey, going, "Oh, I hate Turkey," and I thought this is like where you go anywhere. And yeah. they start going, oh, we hate the next door country. And I sort of went, ah. And she said, it is no laughing mess. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to sort of stand there for the rest of the conversation, sort of trying Try to, Jane, to well, trying to make the smile. I couldn't go straight to not smiling because yeah. that would look like I was yeah. laughing. I had to, and I had to come just gradually just yeah, take, take it, it down. down. <laughs> to, yeah. Because I, I wasn't. See, acting. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. I wasn't laughing at the short slaughter no. of Armenians. And if I had to side with anyone now, I've been to Armenia, I do hate everyone from Turkey. Right. Uh, but, um, are you the type of person who laughs when someone tells you bad news? There are people. That must be really awful when I you laugh. just go, I've got something really bad. And you can see them <laughs> starting to smile. I they, find it difficult not to laugh yeah. at most things. <laughs> It's a natural response. Also, I kind of don't listen very much. Right. I'm a bit deaf. And, so know. someone's telling you a story and you don't know where it's going yeah. and you just end in a laugh and they've just, just said that their dad's has died. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, sorry. It yeah. But your dad is not... No. Did not die, luckily. It, fortunately, he survived. <laughs> he survived. <laughs> he is, he's fine. And he's, he's a fine. hero. Uh, so, but it's so... <laughs> and you went to you went to school with Claire Balding. I went to school. She's posh. Uh, Claire Balding, yeah, she was my head girl at school. Yeah, yeah, a few years above me, way old. And uh, and you uh, went to the same school as Kate Middleton went to as well. Yeah, not at the same time. No. But, but things she, had gone differently. That could yeah, have been, yeah. That well, there's Harry. There I'm gunning Harry. for Kat. He's more fun, isn't he, <laughs> Harry? Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's about my match. That's my level. Uh, but Kate was only there for two terms. Rumour has it she got bullied, but apparently it's because she couldn't possibly stay at Down House School for Girls because they only did lacrosse, not hockey, so she had to leave immediately, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> these are these tricky, so, you know, troubled times when yeah. you're a boarding school lass. It is, it's a different world. It's a tough, so it's, it's tough like, world. It's like you're from Harry Potter, literally. <laughs> That's, that's what we, the rest of us, think. Quite a lot of my fans probably went to public school. Who went to private school here? Cheer now. Quite a few, more than I, more than I thought. Yeah. You, are they just your friends who've come along? Yeah, I don't so. <laughs> Though actually I didn't sound very school. happy about it. I loved school. Did you, hate, did you not like... No. Oh, didn't, didn't like I. it. Oh, wow. No! Why, what was wrong with school? <laughs> oh, where to begin? My, all my family are teachers. You've just insulted me very well. Now you're just laughing in my face <laughs> as I say something serious. What went wrong? It was all girls. It was all girls. Was it really boring, though, or did occasionally... <laughs> did it get... There are no boys around. Let's just practice kissing. <laughs> did that ever happen? No, there wasn't any Did that ever happen actually. to you? No, there really wasn't. No. Yeah, I look back incredibly... No yeah, no, there wasn't. I bet it was happening. Yeah, just maybe. no one fancied you two. That was... That was <laughs> <laughs> after the show if you two yeah. want to get together and sure. make up for lost or during the show actually we are filming it uh, I, can, <laughs> I can spank you with this yeah nice <laughs> it's always going to be good uh, I'm going to go to an emergency question not because oh, yeah. this is what I do but I've got an, I'm very excited because I've got a new emergency question okay. I usually ask people what would they rather have yeah. a hand made of ham or an armpit that dispenses sun cream. Oh, brilliant. But game. I'm not gonna I'm not oh, gonna ask you. Okay. I'm gonna ask you instead. Yeah, this yeah. comes out of something that happened in the first podcast of the series. Would you rather have a tit that dispensed talcum powder? Okay. Or this is a new thing I made up today. I'm very proud of this. Yeah. And this is gonna be the new one. There's nothing can go wrong with this one. <laughs> We're never going back to the old one. It's either a tit that you go, yeah. boop, boop, and like <laughs> And it's everlasting. The talcum powder yeah. is ever. It won't with the ham hand and the armpit sun cream. Yeah. It dried up, or you know, had to wait for it to right. grow back. With the talcum powder, it'll just be one tit. <laughs> is this one of your moves, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> if that's how no, you're. I'm just going to do it to myself. I'm married okay. now. I can only touch my own tits, <laughs> okay. not even my wife's. Uh, and um, this, this is might all. be because you're squeezing her tits. <laughs> <and she's laughs> I'm going, get off, Richard. <laughs> There's the talcum powder. Yeah. Uh, or Sque so yeah. this, or a finger. That can travel through time. Right, just, so what? Just, so just, just your finger. Just your finger. 
<laughs> but wouldn't that be good? Because you could it could go wherever you wanted. You could like poke people in the face. <laughs> oh, it could get sexy. Whatever you wanted. There's not that How many. How does it work if you poke people in the face? What with where you're at? Well, no, it can be. You could just. It would work. <laughs> No, I'm not just Look making this up. Yeah. It would, no, no, of course you're not. It would work in that you would go, right, finger, travel back to 1945 yeah. and poke Adolf Hitler in I the face. I see what you mean. Just as he's in his bunker. Yeah. And it'll go... And then your finger would disappear. Yeah. Or it would just... You'd would just dis- I think you'd just do that. Go through a portal. And it would go... You'd still feel it on your hand. Yeah, but I'd you like would look and go, where's my finger? finger? Uh, but then you might just hear through the portal. Yeah. And it would go... Ah, schwein on zwei, ah, <laughs> Which would what you rather have the finger? Ta- but bear in mind, the talcum powder is, would be everlasting. <laughs> so that, the, <laughs> I reckon you could only probably the power of the time travel probably once a month. You could do. That. Oh really? That's I reckon you get bored of it as well. The thing is, talcum powder is. Does it have to be? Oh, talcum is really unhealthy, isn't it? Doesn't it clog all your pores? Yeah. Yeah. It does. It but would be it a bad thing. When I was growing up, talcum powder was the thing. Yeah. Every after every bath, covered in. Mum cover me. That's the thing, right? Yeah. In the eighties, not anymore so much. Does anyone use talcum powder anymore? Ba- for babies, oh, I think you can use it on babies' bottoms. Some man sweat problem over there has to. If you've got bad use... sweaty feet, if you're a run- I don't have this running. You could put, you know, put talcum powder on your feet after you've been running. Because I thought it was really bad for you and stopped you sweating, and all the sweat sucked back up and you died yeah. or something. I think if it was inside your. I'm not your... a doctor. I haven't thought about it. I think if it was inside your body. That would probably be quite. It might it sort of start desiccating. Yeah. Uh, but it I'd won't be do that. really frustrated about my finger going back because I'd want to be with it. Yeah. yeah. Do you, you know could, what I mean? You could hear though. You could. Uh, maybe Can your you finger just speak to, to you? Did it have the power of speech <laughs> no. as it returns just briefly for a minute just to no. tell you? Because then it could change history if it could speak, but it, and then yeah. everything would change. Yeah. But you, or you could just be in there up Napoleon's bum or something. Yeah. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. Blue. Just. Just no, tonight, Josephine. fingering history would yeah. be, yeah. There are probably other things. I've only just thought of two things you could do with your finger. <laughs> yeah. There may be other things. Picking people's nose. You could see, you could do yeah. that. Yeah. Report, yeah. I prefer the titty talcum powder. Okay, good. That's good to know. Good, uh, good new emergency question. I think you will all agree. Yeah. Uh, if you had invented a tennis racket that could exterminate flies, yeah. what would you call it? Would you call it the executioner? Because I wouldn't, because it's a tennis racket. Can you think I'd, of a better name? I'd That's call it the tennis toma- tennis tomato. The t- 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 <laughs> like something ten- terminated, but tennis tennis minator. Tennis minator. The serve minator. The serve minator. The pr- don't the protect the flies. Serve, serve and die machine. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> I think they went through swipe cushion. Swipe cushion. They probably went through all this, and then yeah. that's why they went for the executioner <laughs> in the end. They couldn't. Yeah. They probably went ball, the ball, the fly ball, ball fly. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, good. Uh, so I'll ask you another emergency question. Okay. Uh, they're not all... I'll do this. This is from a Welsh child who's also asking... I do have some Welsh children working for me writing questions. <laughs> right. But They were asking me a question or they're asking they've, you? They've asked, generic. Every, they've asked okay. everyone questions. There are some specific ones for you. They're not very good. I will sack my... Oh. But I'm going to ask you one of the generic questions that came up with the child. Would you rather be a cow or a badger and Why? Well, I've just... I've been living on and off on a farm recently. Have you? Yeah. So... <laughs> but uh, I, I've been writing. I'm getting out of London to write, so I'm living in the middle of nowhere on this farm, which I kind of love. And I've discovered... the far, My local farm now tells me that badgers are proper frightening. So they will... I've got a dog, and apparently the badger will go for unprovoked for no reason and kill my dog. Right. That's not good. So that's not good. But then I quite like the idea of getting randomly furious like that. <laughs> and I am properly terrified of cows. Yeah. Really scared of cows. Even though they're quite cute, really. But, but they were... charge and kill you. Yeah, but if you were one, they probably wouldn't... Charge I mean, me. Why well, might be a really unpopular shit cow that gets charged by its own? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a badger. Badger? Yeah. That's a good choice. Shall I yeah. ask you one of the other... Uh, yeah. The um, shitty questions. Yeah, they're not good. He's... Okay. He's done quite well in the past. It was a question from this child that okay. made Stephen Fry open up like a flower, like a whatever. Oh, well, let's see what on earth so, is going to so happen So let's see here. what happens to you. What inspired you to do what... what you, sorry, I'll start again. <laughs> what inspired you to do what you do? <laughs> Which seems to have an implied 
whatever that is. <laughs> I don't, I I don't, don't know. know. I'm sure he does know who you are. Who this is, uh, but whatever you do, what, what inspired you. What inspired you to do whatever it is uh, you do. Boring but true, it was Eric Morecambe. Right. Yeah, just seeing him. And the reason was because I'd been told to not be silly that day. And I couldn't bear being told to not be silly by my parents. And then I saw on television these two men being really silly and hilarious. And I thought, it's fine for them to be silly. I'm going to do what they do. <laughs> that was it. Good. And I can remember it. I was, about, I was about seven. So, yeah. And you met Eddie Braben, who was their main <gasps> writer. just was before, amazing. Who recently died. Yeah, just before he died, about yeah. two, three months before he died. Would you think it was your fault? I'm not going to laugh at... <laughs> no, don't want to laugh at the death of Eddie Braben. That's the last thing well, I wanted to do. I didn't. You managed to laugh. I stayed. I stayed stony faced. I didn't I kill uh, but Eddie Brabe, and I did not kill him. No. Okay. No. He's, but that was an amazing thing. He surely. was the nicest yeah. man. He gave me a massive hug. It was really humble and sweet. I cried when I left. Yeah. I couldn't believe I got that close to Morgan Wise. And yeah. could, you know, it was amazing. And he was. And he was kind of. You know, when you meet some comedians who are always on and they have to be telling jokes. Yeah. And normally, I find those comedians really exhausting uh, it, I kind of fascinating but there's yeah we won't we won't name and shame but you know what I mean. there are lots of people who have to be on and have to get the laugh and he was like that but in such a charming sort of childish way because he wanted you to be having a laugh it wasn't about him yes it was amazing he was a great and guy did he send you some jokes and he, he sent me he sent me an email uh, just for christmas said happy christmas here are 10 new eddie braben jokes wow and it yeah and you could just hear eric morcom saying them but then it was also really weird because they were so old. Yeah. You know, they, they were so of their time, but yet you could think, if Eric Morgan said that, he's, such was his genius that we would laugh now, I think. Things like, um, one of them was, I must take the dog out. Uh, I must take the dog out. It's been in the oven for two hours. Nice. You know, just sort of really shitty jokes. Somebody yeah, well. really... <laughs> laughing. Good thing is, we don't have to pay him either. That's the good thing. So we got, he got his joke. Yeah. But Eric Morgan would... <laughs> Sorry, go on. No, I'm but a... Eric would make that funny. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. You made it funny. That was good. That was... Thanks. Let's get all ten of them out. Thanks. <laughs> so we'll go back Sorry. to the proper question. We might have some another question from the young Mr. Evans later, but that wasn't, okay. wasn't very good. I could have asked that question. Oh, all right. Wasted my time. I won't ask a question from Miles <laughs> Jupp. Um, so I have this quite a lot in, in reverse. Yeah. That you are occasionally addressed as sir or mister by yeah. people. Oh, do you get? I get. I often get mistaken for a woman. Do you? <laughs> Only in airports, but or on Why planes. Why just in airports? Don't know. I was. I went when I went to Armenia. The first. Yeah. It, was, it was five o'clock in the morning, and I went through. Uh, I went through the scanners, and the guy said, "Madam, can you put your <laughs> bag here?" But and then I turned around, and then I had a kind of full beard. Yeah. And uh, it's like a 1970s. It's like an Eddie yeah. Braben joke. Uh, and then his mate, he went, "Oh, sorry, sir." And his mate was really pissing himself, which I. <laughs> I don't think they're allowed to do because if you're not allowed to make a joke with them, are they? You, so he sh they should no. not ever laugh because you can't go. Oh, there's a bomb can't in here. Tell it back. Yeah. So because then you'd be arrested. They can't. They shouldn't be allowed to make. No, jokes. it's not fair. Has anyone ever kept looking at your face and still <laughs> kept going with the conceit? Does that have interest? No, I don't think so. But when I'm clean shaven, I mean, yeah. I would be a, quite an unattractive woman. <laughs> I mean, I I'm know. not a great-looking man. <laughs> yeah, I think you're a very good-looking <laughs> man. Thank you very much. I just yeah. I was going for Even better-looking woman. Oh, do you think so? <laughs> yeah. If I had tits that squirted yeah. talcum powder. <laughs> uh, you'd be um, I wish I could do sound effects much better than just... <laughs> make a different sound than that. So that, does that happen on a... Is it when, yeah. Presumably from... I mean, because you're tall and... Yeah, uh, it's, I don't behind. think anyone's kept looking at my face and <laughs> said, sir... I hope not. <laughs> I haven't erased that. But yeah, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Just in shops and stuff, you know, thank you, sir. And they're looking up. And, and I love watching their faces. <laughs> Initially, when it first, because I had long hair till I was about 29. So it started when I had short hair. And initially, I was just mortified. And it was just really scar me. I'd really struggle with it. And then I found it hilarious. So I just, I just vary the way I look at them. And sometimes I just go... <laughs> 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 to see how embarrassed they go yeah. and just vary my response to it so it's quite amusing but uh, yeah no one's continued to look at me luckily and say so but someone from uh, the back my gate is obviously quite manly because right. I had sir sir you've dropped something as I was walking away and I obviously didn't turn around <laughs> and he was getting a bit sir <laughs> <laughs> and I turned around and I was like oh, oh, 
<laughs> well, that means I'm very womanly from behind because I'm only mistaken for women from behind. Yeah, but that's the hair. It's the hair and, and the bottom. And the, yeah, yeah, maybe, womanly bottom. Maybe you've got sort of hip chasse. Well, Apparently, maybe. I sort of really lollop like from <laughs> side to side. <laughs> and that's more manly. We could do an hilarious cross-gender film where we, we have to. For some reason, Let's pretend to be the opposite gender than we are. It could, <laughs> it yeah. could work out. Um, and you're very sporty, or which is maybe a surprise. You, you. Uh, <laughs> Why? Because Why? Because you made your gate. living being slightly ungainly and not the. No, you're, yeah. you're fat. You are very slim at the moment. You obviously. Oh, thank. <laughs> At the moment, because yeah. you know, as yeah. it can always go the other way. It can. Uh, it can. Yeah, because just... I'm, you know, as you've noticed, <laughs> pretty felt myself. No, are you we... looking good? Is all thanks, I was trying to say. Thanks, I would definitely do you if cult, I wasn't married. Actually. <laughs> and maybe if I am married, I might yeah. still do it. If there well, was time. there's a little room backstage. <laughs> Our children be the right height as well. They would. They well, would. Luckily, my wife is a little bit taller than me. So oh, really? Yeah. So I'm hoping that will balance out. Isn't yeah. That? They might just, you know... I See, I think extreme. that's a real man who can have a woman who's taller. Yeah. That's an alpha male right there. Absolutely. Yeah. I like it. Like, like, a lot of her taller friends say, oh, do you have to wear flat shoes? Yeah. Like no, I love, really like having a much taller Do you? Yeah. That's nice. See, I don't think I could go out with a smaller guy. Can't you? No. Yeah. Well... It's a shame. It's once a shame. you've uh, sampled the goods down here, yeah. then... Uh, There's no you, going back. You think you might change your mind. Yeah. Uh, like a poodle can have sex with a great dame. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah. A great poodle. <laughs> um, what, are you saying I'm saying Miranda is a dog now? Is that what you're saying? That's, that's not what I'm saying. No, thanks for the compliment. No, yeah, I've been trying thank to... You. I've, got, it was, you know, I've got a bit of weight to go, but I'm, I'm trying. Um, me too. Yeah. I'm trying, but I ate a massive pizza and yeah. a whole pack of minstrels yesterday. But yeah. I did run 13.1 miles. So I, think it was I right. ate a pie earlier, so yeah. But, uh, but you, um, um, what were you talking you about? You had a trial that? for QPR, for the football. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> In the women's it's football true. team, they the didn't mistake yeah, you for a man. Yeah. That would be really. <laughs> what are you, son? Come in here. <laughs> <laughs> you're even wearing. You're almost wearing the QPR. Top there, the hoops, I, 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 the I genuinely top. wouldn't know. Am I? <laughs> <Nearly>. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I played. I played football with friends at university, and they're all, you know, all the lads going, "Oh, you're quite good," you know. And so then me and a mate went, "Perhaps you really are actually really good." <laughs> and so we went. To, and QPR ladies had a sixth division. We thought, surely they're going to be shit. Surely. And then they, I arrived, and they got quite excited because they, they saw the height. They thought she could be defence. She could be up front. You know. Yeah. Peter crouching it all the way. And uh, I was really bad. <laughs> They're really good. And then I had a massive argument with my mates who said they were sort of first team at their schools kind of thing and then trying to carry on into uni or whatever. And they said we would definitely beat a, the, Brit the um, England girls football. Right. And I was like, there's no way you would. And, we had this, and they were convinced that they would beat them. Right. And I'm right, right, there's no way. They're actually, although they look rubbish on telly, they're actually really good <laughs> at the football. So the boys, the boys thought they could beat the... The boys thought they could beat yeah. the England girls football team. That's what boys are like. I remember, I I remember Jenny being 10 years old and yeah. I wasn't good at football. The kid, one of the kids who was good at football as a 10-year-old said, if the, the Fairlands Middle School second years... Right. played Liverpool, who were the f top of the premiership, <laughs> one time out of 100, they would beat them. Yeah. Just by the law of averages. And yeah. I said, you would never no. beat Liverpool. <laughs> Only if a lightning struck and killed everyone in yeah, the Liverpool Yeah, then you team. would. Then you still might not win, to be honest. I was convinced, because I wanted to be a 100-metre sprinter, I was convinced yeah. that I could beat Sebastian Coe at, at some Sprinting. point. Sprinting. Well, so Sprinting. So when sprint. I wrote to Jim will fix it, I yeah. hate to bring things back to Jimmy Savile. <laughs> okay. But things always do tend to come <laughs> back to Jimmy Savile. Uh, I said, I w please can you fix it for me to run against Sebastian Coe, but will you tell him um, to run normally and not let me win? Because <laughs> <laughs> I really genuinely want to see how far behind I would be. Right. I could bear the thought of him patronising my sprinting. At 100 metres, though, because he's not a 100 metre runner, Sebastian. Mm. Okay. So he might not <laughs> no, be that so good. maybe that was the part yeah. of the... Because I can't sprint at all, but I can... Right. I will used to be all right at middle distance. Yeah, running. I can't run more than 20, me uh, 20 metres, 20 minutes. Right. I can't, I just... So maybe what the film is, is that yeah. you want to become the female yeah. um, middle distance champion runner right. but you can only run for 20 minutes. 20 minutes then I take over with my womanly with your game long hair. and you pretend to be me I think we look quite similar do you? yeah <laughs> 
I think I think that could be. I think we could do twelve nights together. A lot of me just died inside. <laughs> I don't think anyone would spot the difference. Do you think facially we look quite no, alike? And in, and in all in ways. In every way. In height. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, do, do you still do running now? Or you... Sprinting, unless, unless as a child or professionally, is absurd. <laughs> I mean, you don't... You know, unless I did it professionally, I wouldn't sprint 100 metres, would I? Just where? Where and when would you do that? go down to the track, just go have just, a quick 100 metres. I mean, how does it work? I just, <laughs> I just wouldn't. I was on the street, I'm just going to mark this out and I'm just going <laughs> to... In the part, you'd look a bit mental. You'd look like you're doing interval training, but if you just yeah. did 100 metres and stop, like, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> it just sort of doesn't... What, was your, what was your record 100 metres time? Uh, 12.06. Wow. Yeah. And then yeah, a I'm guy... Some of that. that was the low sound of impressed men. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That was fast. Ooh, she's thought. like, well, fast. That is very... Oh, look. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Oh, ah, ah, oh, no, ah. no. Oh. Oh. See, for the people who didn't know, we did just see a flying because you think we've gone mental. I've got to get ready. <laughs> it was a little tiny one. It would be very yeah, cruel really to small. take it out with this. It was this. really small. Last week it was like blue bottles just flying in everyone's face. I was very oh, embarrassed. Oh, but it would have been hilarious with that. We would have had so much fun. Can I do you again to make up? No, don't, because she will die. Okay. Anyone else want to crack on it after seeing what happened last time? It was good fun. I'll ask another question from uh, you from Ben Evans. Yeah. Watch out. Did if you it? see the fly coming again, do shout out. And we'll, it's like a pantomime now. It'll be fun. <laughs> Let's see uh, what the other questions... See, again, I don't understand most of these questions. Yeah. Can you talk about that thing you did? <laughs> 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 I don't think he's saying, can you talk... I mean, he's not questioning your ability to talk about a thing you did. He's just saying, will you talk about... Where you were singing with a bunch of other people... And some people gave you money. <laughs> Carol singing. <laughs> oh, it would have been Fame Academy. Yes, maybe it was. Comic Relief. Yes. That was horrendous. I hated every minute of that. Oh, it just... Because uh, no one knew who I was. And so that's mortifying anyway, because people are going, you're one of those that people are going, is that doing yeah. celebrity <laughs> Fame Academy? And that word, anyway, is hideous. And then I can sing all right, like the teacher said, you're right at singing, and in public, my throat literally completely constricts. I'm so terrified of it. <laughs> and I had to do Let's Get Physical, Olivia Newton-John, which is apparently hilarious, because I was like the comedy... T- Let's get physical! So frightened, and a headband, the whole thing. Oh, I hated it. And Tara Palmer Tompkinson was part of the thing. Right. She's mental. <laughs> I don't... Uh, she's really, really... Weird. What, just, and what that, was the worst most... She just thinks like... She's a seven-year-old trapped inside a 39-year-old woman's... Book, so she'd storm in to the makeup room in just her pants and a pair of boots. Does anyone like my boots? <laughs> and you're like, 39. That's what a seven-year-old would do and you think it really cute and hilarious. Yes. She's just really weird. She beat you then? She won. Did she? That's how dire the whole thing was. She won. Wow. It must have been yeah. a while ago because she's not really a celebrity anymore. No. It was 2007. Was it? So it was like literally just before you sort of broke into... Well, did your radio show was 2008, wasn't it? So yeah. The, I, was so doing, I did Hyperdrive. Of course you were in with, Hyperdrive. With, we can't forget that. Yeah. Oh, there's a... <sighs> I, someone, someone... What I like about this... You were the one who watched it. Someone shouted, I liked it. I've no one has said anything yet. <laughs> It was like a very defensive, supportive act. Well, I liked it. I liked I don't, it. No one said no one didn't like it. Oh, thanks. There were a few people who watched it. Was. it. Dan yeah. Antipolsky was in it. Da- uh, he probably Nick watched Frost it. Was the lead. Nick Frost was in Kevin Eldon. Kevin Eldon was yeah. the actor. Kevin Eldon was the actor. It, it was yeah. a very good cut. Co- it was. Oh. Yeah. <gasps> no one shouted out. This could be embarrassing. Near me. Though. That's near me. <sighs> It's dangerous as well near electronic equipment. Yeah. We could both go up. It'd be a great way to go. A very slapstick death. Yeah. <laughs> imagine, imagine that Miranda Hart was killed today by um, my a man hitting her with the tennis racket. With rat. a s- People going, oh, oh, a oh, small Miranda. woman electrocuted her. Um, <laughs> and you were the the, uh, the favourite thing. I don't really watch Not Going Out. Yeah. But I used to watch the opening titles, and my favourite thing about which I want to make you do now, was in the titles of Not Going Out. Yeah. You would, it would go through the titles and then you would go, sorry. 
Can you do that for me now? That's my favourite thing you've ever done. Sorry, no, before I do that, which is weird, yeah. but I will. <laughs> you. Why, you just watched the titles yeah. and you went, nah. <laughs> I thought it can't get any better than that. It can't get any better Have than Miranda Hart going, sorry. <laughs> my friend Andrew Collins used to uh, write oh, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So I used to take the piss out of him right. and say, that's all I liked about <laughs> Have you ever watched an episode? Well, I wouldn't it? watch it because he wrote it. So I knew it, I knew it would be bad. Hilarious. But can, so can you do the. Yeah, so. The sorry. You, but you've got to put the. Re, pulling out the plug. Did yeah. you ever realise yeah. why? The lights go off. Sorry. It's good. There you go. I'm I happy. mean, let, of all the things that I have worked at in do this job that some people like, some people equally think are shit, which is fine. <laughs> I have to say sorry. Yeah. Do yeah. people shout that at you in the street? <laughs> Never once. They go, do the, do the sorry. <laughs> Sometimes uh, people shout, I'm Japanese at me. <laughs> do they? Which is from a tiny part I had an ab fab. Right. And then I'm just like, what? And then I remember, yeah. I'm Japanese! <laughs> quite weird it is well, I, we get that a lot from I get people things chanting things from like 1990s yeah, radio weird, shows that we did once that I don't have any memory of at all don't remember. so I can, I can I can so people could just make things up and shout them at me I try to make my catchphrases as convoluted and difficult as to say as possible no one has ever come up to me and said I like motorcycling me you know motorcycling around rum, rum, on my motorbike which goes on for quite a long way I can't remember the whole no one's ever said that but, to me in, in full uh, and they Were never you were. hoping that was a catchphrase? I was, yeah. I was deliberately <laughs> trying to come up. Do you write a catchphrase? Deliberately? Tr- oh, well, I wrote a sketch for As It Occurs To Me, which I did right. with Emma Kennedy yeah. and Other Connection. Uh, and uh, the, it kind of failed on the night. It was about me going to right. a motorcycle clothing shop and okay. uh, pretending I liked motorcycling. Right. But I just, like a mad thought. Okay. But no one liked but the sketch. But you wanted it no to one liked be the sketch, your but, catchphrase. So then I just did it every week until people liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Because I thought it was good. And that is the way my comedy works, and that is why I am not currently on primetime BBC One. <laughs> like, uh, but it was, it was kind of an incredible uh, rise, a quick rise to going from, to be compl- you know, from being a successful actor and comedian to being like the most famous, almost the most famous comedian in the country. Or the mo- most well, I you for you. certainly do not feel that. Do you not? I mean, I think it was like very fun. It was, it was almost it, it, your career had been going on for a while. So it wasn't an overnight oh, yeah. success. No, I but don't feel the change was very very famous. Well, is what you I meant. are very famous. But uh, it, it kind of the ser- because yeah, it was ten years I think of Edinburgh festivals and whatever before the series. So yeah. it felt like it was sort of slowly growing. But the series did. I was not expecting that. So it did suddenly sort yeah. of. And it it kind well, of I remember down. hearing it was on the radio. I remember hearing the radio version. Yeah. And then it seemed to go on TV very fast. And then it was. Straight away was a yeah, big so it hit. did yeah quite well on BBC Two. For, I think they put it on at eight thirty, which they weren't planning to on BBC Two. Haven't seen it, which is probably why it kind of was successful. Cause, yeah, I think people who don't like that kind of comedy, they went, oh, that's not for me. It's on eight thirty, and then families watched it. Yeah, but yeah, it's surreal. It's so surreal. The last five years, I just think, what's happened? Because I just thought, <laughs> oh great, I've got my series. This will die on its arse, and no one will watch it. And I remember thinking, how am I gonna? speak to my friends who are in comedy how they're going to cope I have to have some lines for them to go it's fine it doesn't matter I'm, it's fine I know you'll hate it you could have just showed them a copy of a very British cult very British and cult that would have been like, oh, and you <laughs> exactly so yeah it's a bit weird yeah and if you if, 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 did, was it, did it feel like overnight people were you know were you being recognised in the street a lot more and was that hard to cope with or um, I'd had a bit of that with not going out and hyperdrive a bit so there was a very sorry. and sorry <laughs> like a bit of that <laughs> So <laughs> uh, it's a little bit of it. So there's been a sort of gradual build up to it. But yeah. I, I th- weirdly, the most time I noticed it was when it, Series Three went to BBC One, and I didn't. And that, and I'd been away. For, I went travelling three months and sort of did some time off sabbatical. Let's call it. Came back and and that was the beginning of this year. And I was wow. I really noticed the difference. I'd yeah. call the midwife for being on as well. So suddenly you go from BBC Two to BBC One, and it was like something like ten million people on average. It's insane. <laughs> well, it's amazing. In, the, in this day and age, that is just an unbelievable amount. It's just amount of, very surreal. I mean, even Morgan Mawai has only kind of got 20 million, and that was when there was only three stations. So to get... Yeah. Or two stations, probably. So to get that many viewers is... It's quite weird. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think it partly comes out of the kind of the, the Russell Brand, Jonathan Ross 
controversy it was at the round about the same time Maybe with the BBC kind of trying to look, get something that, w- that wouldn't have people ring that you're probably unlikely to ring up someone and say I've fucked <laughs> your granddaughter you yeah. might ring up and say I fucked your great granddad with my finger through time <laughs> yeah through time <laughs> but you, you're well, unlikely to do that so yeah. it's kind of it, I mean I really like it I, I like all kinds of comedy and, I've re- and a lot of people kind of turn their nose up at slapstick and I think yeah. it's very hard to do Slaps and there's more to it than slaps it, but I think the slaps that you do in the show is incredible. That's that that clip of you getting out of a taxi and then closing the door and then the taxi pulls away and the dress and your dress comes off. I think it's it. one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I think it's just that's that, because that, you're seeing my crazy body. It's, it's, it's my it's talcum powder. Just, it's it's just brilliantly timed. The whole thing's brilliantly timed. There's a lot of things happening in a very short amount of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so is that pictures kind of? Is that the Del Boy? Th- falling through the bar moment of Miranda? Uh, people mention the uh, the grave one more, I think. Right. Just oh. because... Because uh, I think we've seen people fall in a grave before, but and I felt, oh, I shouldn't do it, because th- I'm sure I've seen someone fall in a grave before. But then I thought of the line, I'm so mortified, I wish the ground could just swallow me up before <laughs> it. And I thought, that justifies yes. falling in a grave, even if we've seen that before. Yes. So you've got to, you know, always reinvent. But yeah, that, I think that's what I'm most proud of. But mainly because it was really terrifying to do because I'm used to falling to the floor but you had to f- clear you know the debt so I had to f- they had to dig a grave it was so weird <laughs> see I did a joke in a grave in one of my plays where I w- jumped in a grave and uh, naked and had tried to have sex with a skeleton that didn't prove to be as popular as it's your... Less, uh, as, as, <laughs> it's less BBC One, isn't it? It was. I don't think... Well, oh, if you said such fun at the end, you know, it might, <laughs> might have worked. Just like giving it that light... <laughs> if I turned to camera and gone, whoa. Uh, whoa. I thought I was the one who was meant to have a boner. That's what I should have done. That's yeah. <laughs> Then it would have worked. Uh, could, Listen. Could have done. <laughs> if I only had thought of that, I had to yeah. spoil it all with my naked body, which wasn't. Well, I suppose it was, it was quite. There was one time I did that. It was, a, it was my play called Excavating Rita, which I did in 1997, and it was only on stage, although I have been <laughs> naked quite a lot on TV as well now, I think about it. Uh, but it, it always worked because it was always just so ridiculous seeing me run on. But one day, nobody laughed at all. <laughs> no. and, and then it was just me naked, naked about five minutes on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and it was I've just felt and I, every other time I felt like oh it's the character I felt like the character I felt like yeah. a proper actor and I thought I'm the character but the, I felt like it was me naked yeah. and then I get punched out and fall down and then someone was meant to throw something over me and they threw it over me but it missed <laughs> so I was just then I was then just sort of lying on the stage with, with your yeah. <laughs> just and there's nothing I could do because so I you've was... actually lived most actors dream <laughs> yeah. fear dream I was naked on such shit I really was, <laughs> was and I wrote it yeah exactly I, like, I wrote it and then I've got, as the writer oh this is really good and then when it came to the first rehearsal what I was doing I said yeah it doesn't have to I don't have to be completely naked but <laughs> the director's going yeah you do going, you do no, no that would... <laughs> I don't think the writer would have meant that I think he did uh, <laughs> it was insane uh, so... <laughs> Uh, so you're, you're going to do, go on tour? You've got a yeah. stand-up tour? Yeah, I'm going on tour. When was the last time you did stand-up? Ten, but seven years ago. Right. Yeah. Hmm. It's not going to work, cool. is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be terrible. I stopped. I, it is. I had like uh, three weeks Cheers. off after Edinburgh. And then felt shit when I came rusty. back. <laughs> yeah. I was rusty as fuck. Have you, yeah. done, have you been and done any previews I'm doing yet? lots of sort of secret warm-up gigs. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's all right. I mean... But then that's what, yeah. It's different though, isn't it, for, for how you do... Because I think I'm more theatrical, yes. generally. And also I've created a character that I think people want to see because that's how I sort of have to go with that. No, I think so I, was, that, I was being flippant. No, but I then... I think you will be fine. Also, you've got thousands of people who want to come and see you. I'm sort of still grubbing around trying to get these... He'll come to see everything. Tom comes to see <laughs> everything. They come, the but, they're butlers, those two. Are you? Yeah. They come to quite a lot of stuff. Wow, that's but amazing. But it's you know you probably can't name all of your fans and say and tell and say what they do. I pretty much she likes being electrocuted. That's what we know about yeah. Ruth. But you're the, the you're the godfather of stand up. <laughs> well, that's you are of podcasts maybe. But see, no, yeah, it goes you back are. Up, goes back. Up. I've been going a long time. Yeah. Is that you better than being very stuff. successful? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, because I don't know you or your life. 
No. What's your like? What's it like being Miranda Hart? This is the one that got oh. Stephen Fry. <laughs> <laughs> just slipped. What's it? Yeah. What's it like? So what, being well, Fry? What's it like, like being that? Miranda Hart? We asked him, and then he went, "I tried to kill myself." <laughs> <laughs> Did you know? Uh, what's it like being Stephen Fry? Is what I asked him, and he, well, and that was it. And that, he opened up. Wow, amazing! What's it like being des- Miranda? Desperate to get some dirt. From me. <laughs> uh, I, I, I genuinely don't feel famous or successful, so I don't feel any different. It's weird. I don't, you know how some people own that and kind of like, yeah, I'm famous, and will sort of wave at people and expect to be. I just, I get kind of slightly. Im- Embarrassed if someone recognises me. Right. It's sort of, I, I'm, I feel like I'm constantly apologising for what I put on television. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. I think it's a very female thing to do and a very British thing to do and a very middle class thing to do. Yeah. Just sort of constantly going, really, really, <laughs> really. So yeah, I don't feel, I don't, I don't own it. I think, but I think most I performers and most comedians feel like the, one day they're going to get found out and people are going to go, you're not funny at all. Because I think that it is yeah. a, there's a sort of confidence trick to it, which is partly confidence and it's partly just getting on with it. Yeah. But obviously anything you do, most people aren't, you know, if everyone likes something, I mean, Morecambe and Wise are probably the only people who get close, but I bet you'll yeah. still find someone to go, that Eric Morecambe was a Really annoyed cunt. me. You yeah. know, so it's, so it's, you've not got to take the people who don't like you so, no. so seriously anyway, because it's not what it's about. No, I don't. No. Because I always knew that peop- as many people like the show would hate it. I always knew that. I was never. No. It's just even when people are kind, I'm just like, really? I don't. <laughs> but you know how some people, I, I'm trying to think of an example of someone who kind of owns their fame. They just sort of like it and they. Well, there are. I think there are a lot. It and love it and need it. Well, someone like, it. some people really like, someone like David Williams, for example, seems to love being famous. He loves being famous. And that's fine, because I think most, yeah. most, a lot of people want to become famous and, you know, and then yeah. pretend they don't, which yeah. I think is worse than just embracing it. Yeah. He seems to like having lots of celebrity friends and marrying yeah, supermodels. Yeah, no, he likes and, being famous. Uh, yeah, sounds quite good, actually, now. <laughs> sounds quite good, doesn't it, man? Uh, but, uh, and, yeah. I wanted to be famous yeah. and then am and find it really odd and don't like it. So it's a really <laughs> weird... I um, flip the coin. Yeah, yeah, it's odd. And are you friends with other celebrities or are you friends with the people you were friends with before you were famous? Uh, I'm still friends with all the friend, uni friends and yeah. school friends. But uh, I love... I'm just a fan of showbiz and comedy and th- so I love meeting people. Yeah. So I get really excited. And then you suddenly become friends with Dawn French. And for someone like, wow, what's happened to my life? <laughs> That's cool. But yeah, and I've got a few, a few comedy friends. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it is kind of a, it's a it's a very odd thing, and I think you can see why people do because it's you know, become you know because it's hard. I think if you get very famous, it's hard to go out and. Yeah, I think I have not found this. <laughs> I've said to, to, I was doing this run yesterday, and I had my name. I had Richard written on yeah. my running yeah. vest, and people going, "Go on, Richard!" And there's a part of me going, "Yeah," and then going, "Oh no, they've just read. <laughs> <laughs> they've just, <laughs> just read my name." But do you want to be? More famous than... I would like to be slightly more famous. Oh, really? I'd like to get 50 more people coming to see every gig <laughs> I do. Uh, but not much. I've got, you know, I think it's a big... It's a real difficult balance. And 10 years ago, I'd have liked to have been... 10, 15 years ago, I'd have liked to have been the most famous comedian in the world. Okay. And I'd like to have been, you know, all of those things yeah. that come with that. Uh, but now I sort of feel that it's actually real. It's, it's very fortunate in a way to be at the level I'm at that people will still largely come and see me, yeah. enough of them to, to make a living and I can still do what I want to do. Because yeah. I think there, there comes a point where you're so successful that you kind of lose a bit. You seem to have kept very good control of it, but you lose a bit of control of what you can and can't do and then you're getting too many offers and you can, yeah. get, you can get taken down the path of people going, oh, go to Armenia and spend some money and then you could do that every week. Yeah. You can do shows like that every week and then forget to do... Things th- you want to do. I think money come. I think if you like money, that's the problem. Yeah. So I I sort of don't have I don't have an extravagant taste or need money. So I've been able to turn down adverts and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't. And I don't have kids. I don't. I don't need money if you know what I mean. But that that's the problem. I think is is a love of money. Then then that brings a whole level of you're then in a world that your other friends can't sort of join in. Yeah. So, so there are some benefits for working with the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Satire. <laughs> just, but you just, but you know, just spend. Whenever I've had money, I've sort of spent it. Me too. Because then, I'd, otherwise, I fear that I won't do any work, which is why I work well, quite hard because I feel I have to pay work hard to pay my mortgage. Yeah. Or whatever. Well, I spend it because I just think you can't take it with you. Yeah. And you worked hard, so you deserve a holiday. That's true. Yeah. So that's why I shall never yeah, be rich. Cool. Let's, let's have Let's have fun. <laughs> Danny Baker says that. He says he just spends all the time. Did you hear? Yeah, his? yeah, yeah. That's it's great. amazing. It is great. And he's never got into trouble. He's just kind of thought, let's just be free with it. And he's had, yeah, 
incredibly I think generous. it's true. I think if you spend it and then it means you have to work. As long as you can carry on working, it's okay. Yeah, if you're lucky it's just enough if you spend it all then go, no, we don't want that anymore. We're, yeah, we're fed yeah, up. Yeah, we're fed up of your midwife based slapstick. <laughs> <laughs> Get off the My TV. Midwife slapstick. <laughs> That's, That's the two show. things. <laughs> That's the combination. Could be quite funny. The babies yeah. are quite slippery. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are. <laughs> they are very slippery. Um, I'm gonna, I, think, I might know the answer to this. I've, this is a new emergency question as well that so far has not borne through. Have you got any unusual phobias? You think you know the I answer? I think you've to got this? a phobia. I think you have had a phobia. I've had quite a few. Ph- I've yeah. But I know. What the, what's the one you're thinking? I've, 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 I read that it used to be agoraphobic, which is yeah. I'd imma- I, well, sort of not. I take to lay claim to serious agoraphobia. Yeah. I had definitely had a agoraphobic blip. Right. <laughs> and how yeah. did that manifest itself? That's when you can't go, can't I was going to go, go out outside. It's, I was having panic attacks, so therefore if you, 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 the thought of being in the middle of a row, I don't want to alarm you. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if it, I'd always have to sit on the aisle, the thought of being somewhere where you can't, you, in a supermarket queue, anything like that. If you had a panic attack then, it'd be really embarrassing because you'd have to sort of extricate yourself. And yeah. It was that. But I, used to, I, th- I used to find it very difficult being in crowds yeah. when like, you're out and about, which is weird because I wouldn't mind being in front of crowds, but no, I wouldn't exactly. like to be in the middle of the crowds. Yeah. But I did kind of overcome that a bit. But I think I was, it's sort of insecurity and shyness. And, yeah, I think so. I'm yeah. intro- an introvert, naturally, I think, yeah. which is weird, but a lot of actors are, I think. They sort yeah. of get... But I have a fear of a real... And this is a thing, apparently. Yeah. I don't know what it's called. Choking. Oh, my wife has this. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but she, does, she genuinely does. Does she? <laughs> I don't know what to say. But we're all, we all, we're it's all thinking it's maybe, it's She it's genuinely, fine. she genuinely does. She, yeah, she, um, she used to be a comedian. My wife. She used to joke about. Um, actually, there was a joke she did about uh, practicing fellatio by choking on a carrot. Right. But then, within about two months of us getting married, yeah. she choked on a carrot, and uh, luckily I was in the house. She was eating ca- like carrot she batons. She was just eating them. She was, she was just eating them. So they just were baton- a little laugh. They were batons, and she's batons. used to slightly bigger, bigger things than that. <laughs> slightly. <laughs> slightly bigger. Just slightly bigger. Uh, but she kind of got what she, I, she She was choking and then really panicked. Yeah. And I think she was all right. I hit her on the back, which apparently isn't the right thing to do. But then, oh. according to the I app I have, it is the right thing to do. But I was on, on the plane back from Armenia. I was slightly choking on some water. And the air hostess made a big thing saying, we used to be meant to slap you on the back, but now you're not meant to do that. Because health and safety says we mustn't. <laughs> well, you're meant to just cough. You're meant to do that. Oh, right. Actually, coughing will, bring, will probably right. bring... There's too many in my head. Can small. I risk it? I It'd be it would so go amazing. The hole. It's so uh, small. Yeah, it, would, it would be an amazing shot if I get it. Yeah, it that's why it'll kill most mosquitoes because most. most of them will most. get through there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I saved her life anyway. She thinks, but I don't. Know right. She, I, I did hit her on the back. Yeah. So have you ever choked on anything? Well, I asked my mum recently. I said, "Did I choke on something when I was little?" And she went, "No, no, no, <laughs> no, no, you didn't." I went, "Ah, oh, okay." <laughs> so obviously something happened. But you yeah, no, I haven't. Yeah, but. Mm. Yeah. It's all alright. Well, I hate that thing when you you, cho- you start choking on your own saliva. Do you ever get that? <laughs> when nothing, you just. <coughs> okay. No, no one gets Mental. that. Mental. No one gets that. Or a bit of water, you feel yeah. like an idiot. Well, yeah. You're choking on water. I, no, that doesn't. That's what happened to, happen to you? Yeah. What is this Armenia show? I actually can't it's, wait. To it's see called. It. A, well, it, I think it's called Spending Dave's Money. It's like Brewster's Millions. Okay. They give <laughs> okay. you like a big wadge of money and you have to spend it in it's a day. It's not actually David's. It's not, it wasn't David Baddiel's money. No. He wouldn't have been up for that. No. But he, <laughs> he always has a big case of money with him anywhere he goes. Just carries so. it around. So I've just got to check. Oh, we still have got time. That is good. Uh, I'll ask you uh, the final question from uh, young Mr. Evans. Oh, yeah. What did you do on the CBBC programme Stupid and what was it like? Oh, OK. That's not the kids' show. <laughs> it is. Well, yeah, he's, kids he's very obsessed with kids' shows, this idiot. But so am I. Can't wait till well, Mars jumps quite, on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like this sketch. I played a vet. Right. And um, the cat... Well, was I the owner? No, I was the vet. And it, um, somebody brought in a windy cat. <laughs> and so there was lots... We had a real cat, and then there was lots of... <laughs> the person who watched Hyperdrive thinks this is hilarious. <laughs> uh, and then there was a wind machine, so we constantly had to have... <laughs> with my hair going like that. Right. I, th- I thought it was really funny, but yeah. I find farts funny. Yeah, they are funny. 
They have in life them. and on television comedy. I, that's a, I saw a good thing today, which you could use in a sketch. Oh, yeah. I've got a sketch. Like this is oh, yeah. your, uh, what your uh, like aunts mother. and uncles say to you. I saw a good thing today. Yeah. But the, uh, I was in a toilet, and the hand, it was one of those hand that keeps on going off yeah. every time you go near it. Yeah. But it was very powerful and facing and just going really down into the floor. Right. And so everything just sort of floated around. like it was I've brilliant. done that. Have you done that? Yeah, with popcorn. <laughs> yeah. In the toilet. Because it happened to my brother-in-law, and he went to the cinema. Mars, five-year-old son yeah. and a five-year-old son really excited dad straight and they put their popcorn down and put on the hand dryer wow. <laughs> and my nephew screaming get the popcorn it's so like being that. in the episode of the Simpsons when they're in space and all those ants <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's good use so it so I did that put I have that in, uh, put that in one of your uh, scripts have you done it already I have done it it's been on the television thanks for watching okay. <laughs> If it wasn't in the opening titles of Not Looking Going Out, out then I won't have seen it. You haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> and have you ever seen a ghost? Do you know? Yes. Yeah. Have you? Great. I'm Last. S- I'm still sceptical. I don't know what ghosts are. I don't know if I believe in ghosts. However, I don't know the answer to this thing where I was staying in this old convent with my aunt and uncle in Gibraltar and my cousins were in one room, then there was an bar- interconnecting bathroom with, two, with a door to their room, and then me and my sister were in the other room. And I went to the loo in the middle of the night, and there was a story of a nun that had been bricked up in my cousin's bedroom. Right. And I was like, bollocks, bollocks, nun, you know, a ghost don't exist. And anyway, I went to the loo in the middle of the night, and a door opened to their room, uh, and somebody walked through and opened the door into my room and carried on walking through it. And I went, Lizzie, I go, what are you doing? Why don't go into, well, are you going to my bed? I mean, I honestly just thought, I wasn't scared that so, what, someone went through. Yeah. I thought, oh, that's weird. Oh. Anyway, so half asleep, went back to bed, turned over and still saw this woman and genuinely just saw someone <laughs> scream so loudly, woke everyone up. And I, I just saw a thing walking along and the doors opened and they were fast asleep. So how do you? You were asleep. I was asleep. But everyone came in. Yeah, that was they they were awake because you'd screamed. <laughs> so I was asleep when I went to the loo and just yeah. dreamt it. Maybe. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but then the next morning I yeah. told the story and my aunt went, I don't want to talk about it. Right. And then when she left that house, she said it's because three or four people told exactly the same story. I mean, but Had what's weird is... the nun been bricked is, up the week before? Because it might just have been a, the nun escaping. Getting out. Yeah. Alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so weird. Yeah, it's quite weird. Yeah, and what... Uh, and she said, what's weird is that no one was scared. And then you think, yeah, that is weird. I wasn't really scared when she walked past. Went, uh, and then when I saw it, I was a bit kind of... Yeah. Perturbed. Perturbed. What are ghosts meant to be? Well, you know, there's so many different theories. Yeah. Um, my thing, thought is that just they're the visions of mentally ill people. Right. <laughs> well, that makes sense in this anecdote. Or very sense, people are very sensitive, sensitive. to mentally ill stuff. To, to uh, mental they're meant health. to be like the spirits of uh, restless people. On the people. way to You know, someone who's heaven. been bricked up in a wall. Yeah. Probably quite pissed bit, off. Bit angry, yeah. When they died. Yeah. You'd, if you had the opportunity to hang around and come back and, and have a go at people, people off, then you'd you would. Take it, wouldn't you? Yeah. If you ever become a ghost, will you come and visit me and let me know? What do you want me to do? I don't know. Just get some antics. Okay. Get your your yeah. ghost sheet could be ripped off in yeah. a taxi. <laughs> then I'd know it was you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we could do a rent a ghost version. Okay. With you. Uh, and have you ever seen a Bigfoot? Uh, no, just mine. Yeah. <laughs> Does everyone say that? Yeah. Is that like the bell Not going off in QI? Such... It would be. Well, Sh- Shappy did, but no one else has. Everyone else has taken... Shappy got big feet. She did make the Bigfoot joke, but everyone else has taken it in the deadly earnest that it is intended. It is. And yeah. I am quite offended that you have mocked my question. Well, you laughed at my potentially dying father. That is... So... What you have done is much worse. But, <laughs> but no my one... feet, for my height, are quite petite. They're a size oh, eight. Yeah, yeah. Size eight? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, I wear size eights, but I'm yeah. a little bit, a little bit under. You crazy like, fool! My shoes are like my condoms. Uh, so just always <laughs> over exaggerate a little bit. Uh, and um, do you ever eat a spa- the vegetable asparagus? Yes. Um, it's good to know. Uh, yeah. When you go to the toilet after green eating asparagus, wee. no, it's not green. It's, it's not green. Stinks. Does it, does it smell? Yeah. Yeah. 
Is that a sign of... No, just, it's, you know... It's sexual Dave... magnetism. <laughs> no, Dave Gorman, uh, I mean, had a discussion about it, but some people can't smell their own asparagus weed. Some oh. people's weed doesn't smell of asparagus. But Even you are very firmly in the camp of it does and you can. Yeah. Stand up. People but I have a, a very, very keen sense of smell. Do you? Yeah. I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I ran a half marathon yesterday. Uh, that's, but after the half Absolutely marathon, my weak. wife said, oh, you've really got to go home and have a shower. You stink. I go, yeah, yeah I just c- ran clearly. fucking 13.1 miles for the little disabled kiddies. Yeah. Because I Can smell. Can I say, big respect, half marathon, that's extraordinary. Yeah. I'm disappointed in my poor time. Oh. Um, but I'm glad I'm still You've just got to remember that you're very, very old. And you're I'm, out of old. Shape I'm old. I'm <laughs> old. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'm going to ask you an Edinburgh Fringe based question as well, oh, okay. which I don't. Well, it isn't. It's from the Edinburgh Fringe podcast. It's not. Yeah. If What's you with ha- your crazy system? You turn the book upside down. Because <laughs> that's the, the emergency questions, and I go back to your questions. Why well, can't all... the emergency questions be the right way up? Because the, if then I'd have to write them out every single time I did it. Whereas if they're in the back of the book, then I can. Oh, you, I, they could still it's be the, the right, right way up. up. Mental. Yeah, it's just the kind of guy I am. Some of us, <laughs> yeah, some of us see ghosts. Some of us turn a book around and use it like it's the book that way. Yeah. Around. That's the logic of that. Yeah. But you're getting to the heart of me. I might admit something I know, terrible. I, I like interviewing, you see, rather than being interviewed. The, oh, so I like to ask you questions. Yes. If you had to marry one of the Muppets, which you know, one would you marry? The thing is, this, the worst thing about this question is that you've revealed the fact that the Muppets passed me by. Oh, wow. I know. That is a good revelation, though. It's weird, isn't it? Do not, but you must know some of the Muppets. Have you never seen any of the Muppets? I've, well, obviously I know Miss Piggy and yeah. Kermit. Yeah. And the two... I can't even remember their Waldolf names. Waldorf and... And Randy. No. Sandler. S- see, I can't... That doesn't trip off Everyone my head. Everyone knows it. Isn't that embarrassing? It is. And then it skips you by and then you just think, shall I go back? Do I start now <laughs> and watch it? Yes? Yeah, go. Why don't we... Just, is... Why don't you go and watch it? Yeah. We'll wait, and then you can come, come back, back and tell us. <laughs> okay. We'll all just sit here patiently. After and Miles. Go and yeah. go, it's the Swedish chef. It's the Swedish chef, Rich. That's the one I'd like. Uh, yeah, it is kind of embarrassing. And now I've admitted it to everyone. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm going to ask you another... I thought you were growing up in Torquay, but you didn't. You're not, you were born in Torquay. Born in Torquay. But you didn't You didn't. Grew grow up, up in there. Hampshire. So I'm from the West Country. I know, Western Superman. Because you, when we did our film, which was around there, yeah. you didn't stay in the crazy hotel. You stayed with your mummy and daddy. Oh, no, I did stay in the hotel. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh. The, uh, the apart hotel. Yeah. It's called the something... And I wrote a blog about it. Right. Because there was two... There was a hotel that was in two bits, and it was called the part, the apart hotel or something like that. Yeah, the apart hotel. <laughs> and, and I made a joke about it being like... I, I, I pretended it was like apartheid and all the black people had to sleep in one <laughs> and I, was, I wrote a blog about how awful it was in this day and age that a hotel could divide its <laughs> guests along racial lines into yeah. two different hotels and then the hotel got in touch with me and said if I didn't take that blog down that yeah. they would sue me yeah <laughs> I, think, I can that... sort of see that <laughs> <laughs> and I said I wouldn't take it down really yeah. and what did they do they didn't sue me I said I would I would say I put a thing on the bottom saying, this is a joke. This is a joke. <laughs> and they, they do not discriminate. On yeah. <laughs> but I've written a blog every day, and this was quite early on in the blog, so yeah. it, must, it must have actually been after 2001, because I still do oh, write about okay. it. Uh, but it, it might be 2003. Uh, but uh, I'd written a blog every day, and I didn't want to take them down, because then I might, would have, then that would have been my, yeah. my anal des- desire to have a blog every day would uh, have been destroyed. It's like the OCD. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'll ask you this question to finish on. Yeah. What would it take for you to fillet the actor Keith Allen? <laughs> what would you need in return? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good final question. Yeah, it's, it requires some quite hardcore thinking it, it as does. well. It does, but have, you can have all the time in the world. I'll try and kill flies. Kill flies. And, and not kill you. Yeah, what would it take? Well, maybe... Um, can you be like abstract? Can you? Can I? Could, could I go back ten years? Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you go back ten years. I'll go fillet back ten years. And fillet what? When he's younger or when you're younger? No, I just that I, I'll fillet him you now. You fillet him and then you'd go back ten years. And so then I want know. to start my life ten years oh, ago I again and live oh, them I see. ten so you get years. ten extra years of youth. Yeah. Of relative youth. All well, right, Leah, lay off me. <laughs> either I'll be where I am now but be 30 yeah or I'd like to go back and do it all again yeah but 
it's not bad being 40, is it? I did a show called Oh Fuck I'm 40 and I did yeah. feel terrible at the time. But I would give anything to be 40 now. No, no, I I'd don't. I'd forlate Keith Allen to be 40 for a, for a bit. I don't worry about being 40. I'm loving being 40. Yeah. And that's the point. So because now I feel quite happy and confident, I want 10 years of being 40. Yeah. But being 30. Being 30. <laughs> because then you've got the wisdom and confidence to be 30. Yeah. Yeah? It's a good answer. Yeah. And also, if you could go back 10 years, you might forget that you'd done it until the 10 years have passed and then yeah. you go, oh, fuck, I've flayed Keith Allen. <laughs> but then you yeah. have to live the rest of your life, life knowing, that. knowing that. But you've had 10 extra years and you've done <laughs> your 10 extra years better. Yeah. It's a very reflective point, isn't it? It is. Yeah. If Keith Allen's penis could travel through time, yeah. though, <laughs> could, he could when get you again. That's he'd do it and then he'd go, he could when keep... you're least expecting, oh, right, this again. Yeah, but then my finger would just bat it away. <laughs> <laughs> So it'll be fine. Well, uh, you're gonna have to, you've got to go because you have to go and do a thing. And uh, it's been wonderful uh, to have you here. Will you please give a massive round of applause to my guest, Miranda Hart, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks so much. You're amazing. How'd you like them sky potatoes? <laughs> mm, some lovely cornicing there, isn't there? And the, just up there, look at that. That's uh, Victorian. Uh, as is my house in Hercules Terrace. So, uh, yeah, stop that. I'm not an idiot. It was quite nice because uh, you, you don't know where I'm looking now. I could be looking down your top. I couldn't because it's, that's not how uh, this works. I can't see you, or can I? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh dear. Well, it amuses me, and that is the main thing. I think I'm the only person that I amuse anymore, and that that's enough for me. I don't care anymore. So uh, there'll be more of this rubbish next week. Do come and see me on tour, Lord of the Dance Seti. By the time you see this, I might be doing another show, which should probably be called Happy Now. Should be touring in 2015 and 2016. Come and see me at the Leicester Square Theatre in August and September, where I'll be doing every single one of my shows. Come and see this series of Rich Strange Leicester Square Theatre podcast, June and July, Mondays in June and July. We've got some fantastic guests confirmed. Uh, Robert Webb, Johnny Vegas, uh, Limmy, Bob Mortimer, both of those very nearly sold out. Roisin Conti. Uh, did I say Louis Theroux? I think I did. There's some, there's some amazing people coming up. Emma Kennedy. Uh, so go to the Leicester Square Theatre website to find out about those and about the run I'm doing in uh, the autumn sort of thing. July, August, September. It's kind of autumn. Uh, so I'm going to go. I've got to go on. I'm going to Wrexham now. It's too late to see me in Wrexham. And sadly in Wrexham, uh, I was in a massive venue and I've been, they've asked if I can go in the smaller venue and I'm still nowhere near filling the smaller venue. It's not good for my ego. That's what I'm saying. You know, I just had a nice time recording the DVD last week. You, you people out there, you keep me on my toes.